Wonderful. Thank you so much, Allison, for that introduction. And I'm very excited to be here with each of you this evening to discuss Filbert term and career services at Bennington College. You, uh, family and support systems, are valuable um, in helping us steward the information and the tools that students need to be successful in navigating their Filbert term search and also postgraduate um, uh, planning as we want our, all of our students to have the tools and the skills and the confidence to succeed. I'm joined today by my colleague in the Career Development and Fieldwork Term Office, Sarah Krinsky, who is our Associate Director of Career Development and Fieldwork Term. We are a dynamic partnership and we are committed to ensuring that all of our students are um, um, getting the, the necessary support that they need to feel um, ready and prepared for any opportunities that we present to them. So thank you so much, Sarah, for being here this evening. Um, we will be discussing individual career services that Bennington College offers all students and recent graduates, um, fieldwork term in general, and giving you a very high level overview of the fieldwork term program, um, some frequently asked questions that we receive from prospective students, families, parents, um, and even current students about fieldwork term and other career services that we offer our students and will uh, allow you obviously to provide um, um, perspective or ask any questions that you have using the chat box. We'll also be um, reinforcing key messaging um, throughout our time together this evening um, in the chat box with some, some resources. Some of the links um, using uh, a, a URL shortener may read in an error. Um, so we apologize for that. So we will follow up after today's um, uh, presentation um, with all the resources and information, including the slide deck um, that, um, you will, you will, that you will be seeing on your screen uh, this evening. So first and foremost, everything that we do in the career development and fieldwork term office is rooted in our mission, which is to assist students explore and define their personal career goals while developing the skills and the confidence necessary to succeed. We are a growing team consisting of career development and employer relations professionals. And what we enjoy most about Bennington College is the amazing experiences that our students are excited about for their fieldwork term, and also the opportunity to see where they're going as they complete their degree. We are a um, um, certainly a, a team that wants to continue engaging with students beyond completing their degree. We will work and continue to serve students through two years past their graduation date, as some students um, and recent graduates may need continued support from the college. Um, beyond those two years, we still allow the students to use some of our tools um, um, that are exclusive to our currently enrolled students through Handshake, which is a really great resource that many of our students use to navigate um, or manage multiple aspects of their fieldwork term search process and their postgraduate job search process as well. Um, we assist with everything that you would expect one-on-one -on -one, um, to support students in their comprehensive career development. Um, and that consists of career exploration. So what do our students want to do? Um, and how can we assist them in developing the, 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 the knowledge areas to pursue different career pathways um, in uh, partnership with our academic services um, colleagues at the college. We also work one-on-one -on -one with students to devise fieldwork term and postgraduate job search strategies. Working one-on-one -on -one is the most effective way to ensure that our students are having that individualized focus because career development is personal. And we want all of our students to be heard and to help build an action plan for opportunities that align with their goals. Or if they're still exploring, we want them to be able to figure out um, which uh, experiential learning opportunities for fieldwork term will help elevate their interest or their knowledge in different areas that they're still actively interested in. We also work one-on-one -on -one with students to review and edit and make recommendations for um, 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 
their, their application materials. So that might be your resume, your CV, a cover letter. For graduate school, that might be a personal statement or other application materials that may be needed for different types of employment. All of our students have such a diverse range of experience as they leave Bennington College that we want them to feel very confident in connecting their application materials to their intended reader or audience. So we work with students to review and edit those documents regularly in preparation for their search. Uh, interview preparation is a popular appointment type among many students so that they can build the confidence to effectively communicate their readiness for different fieldwork term opportunities and for postgraduate job searching. And this might include um, different interview types like behavioral interviewing um, so that we're offering students a variety of questions that they can begin practicing, pulling examples from their fieldwork term experiences and other um, uh, co-curricular, extracurricular activities through their involvement at Bennington. Um, and finally, uh, graduate school decision making, as we know that some students may um, be considering continuing education as part of their long-term career goal setting and planning, and we want to assist students in navigating um, that search effectively. So our advisors will work one-on-one -on -one with students to consider if graduate school is, is sort of in uh, or needed for their, their career plans, or if they're planning for a gap year in preparation for uh, graduate school, we can assist with making meaning out of what that year or, or multiple years may look like as they continue to to explore graduate schools um, um, in, in, um, in, in that period of transition. Now, our career center has um, partnered with a variety of employers across the United States and even abroad to provide a range of programs and events. Um, many of these programs and events from employers from across all industries are geared to showcase specific opportunities, um, hiring opportunities designed for early and career talent. So we use um, Handshake as, as, and I'll speak a little bit more specifically about our online career management and recruiting platform in a second. But Handshake is our central hub where all of our programs and events are located. And daily we may have anywhere between two to 25 events or programs that employers from all over the world are um, wanting to connect to Bennington students. And we're very selective in the types of programs that we are um, putting forward to our students because we want to ensure there is a range of different interests that are represented from Bennington's um, academics, but also a range of career development topics that we know are going to be important to our students' professional development. Our office also facilitates programs that we um, promote to students that are posted through our online career management and recruiting platform. Um, and, uh, for instance, tomorrow we have an interviewing preparation workshop um, and have quite a few students registered, so we're really excited to help them hone their interviewing skills and get them ready for um, um, future um, um, job or graduate school academic interviews. And finally, our e-resources are another great way to assist students in giving them the tools that they can reference so that they have um, um, the, the guides, the sample documents that would be important or critical to important aspects of their um, uh, fieldwork term or postgraduate search process. And that includes everything that you would expect a career center to provide its students, including resume and cover letter writing guidelines and sample documents to professional correspondence guidelines and how they can prepare um, uh, email correspondence correspondence to um, different employers if they're prospecting options, um, or um, even how they can manage their, their fieldwork term um, through a, our fieldwork term search planning checklist, which is a really great resource for students to begin early planning um, and then manage um, their search early. Um, so we, we certainly encourage you to review some of our resources as our directory is constantly growing as we've um, sought input from our students and other important Bennington stakeholders to really meet the unmet needs of our Bennington students. So we're, we're really excited to continue expanding that, um, that catalog. 
As I shared earlier, Handshake is our centralized hub. Some of you may be familiar with Handshake. If you're an employer, if, you're, if your company or organization uses Handshake to connect um, opportunities to early and career talent. And it really is designed with, with entry-level talent in mind or students who have maybe no experience. So opportunities that we source through Handshake are not just for fieldwork term experiences. Some opportunities may be part-time or flexible opportunities that are local to Bennington, Vermont, where students can connect with um, employers for outside um, fieldwork term or, or postgraduate employment opportunities. Um, we provide a lot of, or there are a lot of resources within Handshake to assist students in managing their fieldwork term or their postgraduate job search. And that might be in, um, students scheduling their own career advising appointments. They do not need to interact with an advisor during our, our typical nine to five um, um, uh, schedules. They can log on uh, right now if they wanted to, and they can uh, schedule an advising appointment for tomorrow um, and under any of those topics that I discussed earlier. So it's really convenient for someone who has a very, um, uh, 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 crazy, busy schedule. Um, we also um, in the system have um, our directory of programs and events. Students can register for those and students can, of course, register their annual fieldwork term experience with the college. Um, and just so that you know, and Sarah is going to speak here momentarily about fieldwork term, that registration process facilitated through Handshake goes through a couple reviews before the experience is approved. And it's something that I wanted to share a little piece um, about before Sarah goes into her fieldwork term um, information share out, because when we review and approve an experience through Handshake after a student submits it, the employer then gets um, a notification and they are instructed to review and approve and ag agree to the terms and conditions of the student's experience through that platform. Um, so sometimes experiences can be can go through a workflow very, very quickly once it's facilitated through Handshake. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer if the employer is not vigilant um, to the communication that the college is sharing with them. So we send out plenty of reminders to our employer partners as soon as we move the experience through um, the workflow. But Handshake is the hub where all of this is initiated. And again, if you're just joining us, I, I just um, saw a few people enter the presentation. If you have any specific questions, Sarah and I will address those at the end of today's uh, presentation. And we'll also share the slide deck and other key resources in a post-event uh, follow-up communication. Um, and finally, with Handshake in mind, almost every single college and university um, is using Handshake as their centralized career, online career hub. And what that means is we have this massive um, 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 community of young or early in career professionals for them to network with each other. Um, so students are already connected and have a massive network, not just with Bennington affiliated um, connections, but this massive network of other like-minded students from all over the United States. And it's really exciting to see students make these connections with um, employers, with um, fellow uh, students at other colleges and universities to explore di the diversity of experiential learning opportunities that the um, college or other institutions or even employers are presenting to our students. So it's really exciting to um, see that feedback that we've received from students about how they are engaging uh, with Handshake. And finally, just so that um, um, I do not miss this, what we, uh, an efficiency the college made um, at the start of this academic year is that students who enroll at the college for the first time have an account generated for them and they can begin accessing that as soon as they're enrolled with their bennington.edu email address. And because we've um, partnered with information technology to ensure that any updates that are coming from our, our central system populate um, is reflected now in the Handshake account. So it will follow that student along toward uh, completion of their degree. So it really is updated um, as regularly as the information is synced, which is nightly um, as, as students um, progress toward completing their, their degree.
All right. Well, thank you, John. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining us again this evening. Um, so I'm going to go over a little bit more about fieldwork term. Um, it's something that is very unique to a student's Bennington College um, education and um, has is really a cornerstone initiative that's aimed at you know enhancing um, each student's classroom education with an immersive and you know hands-on experience um, during the designated fieldwork term period. Um, so it is a graduation requirement. Um, so and students are required to complete a total of four fieldwork term experiences. Uh, that would be one for each academic year or for each year of full-time enrollment. In terms of the hours and duration, um, in order to earn credit for a fieldwork term ex experience, students must complete a total of 200 hours. Um, and they can achieve that in a couple of different ways. Um, so they can choose to split it in half and engage in a two primary 100 hour fieldwork term sites concurrently. Um, they can complete all 200 hours at one primary site, or they can uh, register a primary site with 140 hour minimum and 60 hours of supplementary work at a second site. Um, so altogether, there are three different options that students can pursue in order to complete the 200 hour requirement. Um, the standard duration based on the academic calendar is about seven weeks um, that takes place over the designated winter or summer fieldwork term periods. Um, and this does provide students with, you know, a sufficient amount of time to be able to fill, fulfill that minimum requirement of 200 hours. There are several options when it comes to fieldwork term um, and experiences. Um, by far, internships rank as the most sought after and commonly completed fieldwork term experience. Um, in addition, and John will talk a little bit more about this as we go on in the presentation, um, but the options include the taught fieldwork term experience, something that we piloted this year, aimed specifically for first and second year students. Um, students can also use uh, a select campus job as part of their fieldwork term option. Um, there are also a number of fellowships available, as well as apprenticeships and independent studies. Um, so all in all, you know, uh, Bennington College uh, throughout this time has really established some ongoing partnerships with employers across the U.S. in order to provide different experiences for Bennington College students. Uh, students. Um, some of the notable reoccurring sites include Beyond Plastics, the Bennington Museum, New York Public Radio, the Clark Institute, along with other notable research experiences with faculty at the University of California, Berkeley, Williams College, Harvard, and Columbia. Students can benefit from our fieldwork term archives. Um, it's a growing directly, directory of previously completed fieldwork term experiences for students to use as part of their search. So as career advisors um, in our advising appointments and through our resources, um, this is one of the avenues that students can use to kind of take a look at the experiences that peers um, and alum have completed in the past. Um, so again, it will serve as a resource for career exploration, employer outreach, um, as well as you know, future networking opportunities. And just to take a quick look at some of the numbers for this current or this past winter. Um, so in total, we had about 465 registrations. So really the bulk of students are completing their fieldwork term experience during the winter term. Um, 11 of those were apprenticeships, 21 included campus jobs, 39 students were awarded various fieldwork term fellowships. Um, we had 53 independent study registrations with full-time faculty members, 276 internships, and a total of 65 students that enrolled in the taught fieldwork term experience. Um, and John will talk about the lifestyle and career development part of that course. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and as Sarah shared, the taught fieldwork term experience was uh, piloted this past winter fieldwork term, and we are offering it again this summer. 
um, and accepting registrations for the summer fieldwork term, uh, top fieldwork term experience, all the way up to the start of um, that fieldwork term, summer fieldwork term period, which is um, in mid-June. And we're really excited that we can provide students a, an immersive experience to help them really learn more about themselves. So the crux of career development is to gain an understanding of your interests, your values, your personality and strengths. And we incorporate that and give students the mindset to identify experiences that consider or complement their identities. And this is also important because this is foundational to the, pan the plan process at Bennington College as well. We want our students to look at fieldwork term as an extension of their fall or their spring terms. And by doing so, they're able to identify experiences that consider their interests, which is really the root of what we want our students to consider um, when identifying fieldwork term opportunities so that they can elevate their knowledge and they can skillfully master um, some of the goals that they are establishing in partnership with their fieldwork term partners. So that's the foundation of uh, the top fieldwork term experience for lifestyle and career development. Students also have the opportunity to learn how to um, promote um, aspects of um, their interests, um, uh, their knowledge obtained from the classroom and other past or, or current opportunities like fieldwork term, term experiences, co-curricular, extracurricular experiences, and, and even part-time employment into their personal brand so that they feel skilled and confident when they're promoting aspects of who they are to their intended audience. And that's really important that students know how to effectively communicate um, uh, through their resume, through their cover letter, through other types of application materials that may be requested by um, employers, and how they are communicating that through interviewing. And we learn the art of interviewing and how to respond and engage with potential employers um, through networking conversations. So it's a very effective um, segment and integral to the top fieldwork term experience. And we wrap that up over the seven week period with career management strategies. We're not just assisting your student in navigating the, um, the, their fieldwork term search planning process. We're helping them build a lifelong skill to manage any any at any stage of their career, how to how to move through that effectively, or how to access the the, the tools that they need to be successful in managing multiple aspects of their careers. So we're really excited that we're continuing to offer this as an option for first and second year students in its pilot year. We've also opened this up um, to some um, juniors and seniors who may benefit from um, um, some of the segments of, of the top fieldwork term experience. And registrations, as I shared, will go all the way through the start of um, that first week of uh, summer fieldwork term, which I believe begins June 17th. So we're really excited to continue offering this. And just as a preview, we already have over 10 Fieldwork term registrations for summer and um, four of those, sorry, we have 10 registrations um, all together um, um, that include all of the topics except for the top fieldwork term experience. So we're hoping that we can increase those registrations um, uh, for students who are really going to be um, uh, benefiting from um, this immersive um, seven week course. All right, so we've compiled some of our frequently asked questions, and we also have a document that if you see in our link tree, there are um, um, uh, there's a more robust compilation of uh, frequently asked questions and responses to those that we know are really important. Now, context matters um, in um, when asking any of these questions, and I'll ask Sarah to provide some perspective on some of these, but these are really foundational that we receive um, from a variety of different stakeholders regarding uh, fieldwork terms. So Sarah, I'm going to just begin by asking something really um, important as part of the planning process for a fieldwork term experience. When is the ideal time for students to begin their planning for you know, their very first fieldwork term experience or should they be also considering um, uh, future fieldwork term experiences in the early planning as well? When's that ideal time? Yeah, so pretty much right from the beginning, we really encourage students to be proactive and intentional with the experiences that they're looking for. 
Um, so if they are, you know, looking for a winter fieldwork term, um, that timeline comes around pretty quickly. Um, and so we would encourage students um, to start thinking about those opportunities potentially in the summer and then come right to our office and work with us right away. Um, if they don't secure something for the winter, then our office is available for students to connect with. We are, uh, you know, 12 month um, office, you know, so we are constantly available for students to connect with our office so they can spend that winter term connecting with us and and starting to plan for the summer, but it should be sort of an ongoing process, um, even as students complete their experience, getting excited and thinking about what future experiences they'd like to have. Wonderful. And, and yes, just to reiterate what Sarah shared, some students are, are beginning um, out of the gate as soon as the fall term begins or earlier as they are, are working with us over extended breaks, um, as we're all here um, to support students throughout the entire calendar year. So it's really great that we do have students connecting with us over the summer in preparation for, say, their winter fieldwork term. Um, also, it's important to know the many uh, in, uh, structured opportunities for summer are typically um, posted by recruiters during the fall. And many recruiters who are promoting summer internships, for example, will hope to have their hiring wrapped up by the end of the fall term. So that does give students um, ample time during the spring term if they are planning for a summer fieldwork term experience to have that registered by the posted registration deadline. Now, Sarah, um, now, now that we're talking about different experience options, what um, and, and we know that we've discussed the diversity of options that students plan or complete for a fieldwork term, but are all fieldwork term experiences paid? So not every experience um, will be compensated when we are working with students. Um, we really encourage them to look for opportunities that will be compensated either through hourly pay or stipend, um, and particularly um, through the fellowships. Um, so those are different opportunities where students um, can seek out uh, different experiences that will be compensated. However, there may be some um, options that if it's a, you know, a small nonprofit or they're working um, potentially with an artist as in an apprenticeship, um, that financial component might not be there. So as we're working with students during our advising appointments, we really try to guide them um, through a process so that they can think uh, clearly and effectively about how to go about that fieldwork term experience. And that's wonderful that the, the college also provides support to students. Some uh, students who meet a certain need threshold annually may be eligible for a fieldwork term stipend and um, um, and we issue scholarships as well. Um, that application period and, and the awards are typically given in the fall, um, even if a student is planning um, for a summer experience. And just to give you a, a number and quantify that, the college this year provided over $200,000 in fieldwork term uh, stipends, scholarships, and fieldwork term fellowship stipends, which is remarkable that the college has invested so much uh, money into providing um, um, some uh, financial support to offset some certain costs associated with paid and unpaid experiences. Now, this um, this uh, next question comes up quite frequently about housing. So, does does the college you know help students navigate the the search for housing if their experience is outside of Bennington, Sarah? Like, tell us a little bit more about housing considerations. Yeah, so our office is is fully aware that, you know, finding suitable housing during those designated terms can be really difficult if it's not planned properly. Um, so we've put together a housing guide with some resources for students, um, identified different housing options in several major U.S. cities. Um, where, you know, Benton College students often frequent for their fieldwork term experiences. Um, you know, in order, you know, for the safety and well-being of students, um, we cannot at this time endorse hosting students in private homes um, as we want to ensure, you know, we're complying with necessary safety standards, um, which can, of course, be challenging. Um, some of the things that, you know, students can find within this particular housing guide um, is 
things such as leveraging connections, right, with their fellow classmates, housemates, faculty, and staff, right, um, by attending their house coffee hours to, again, connect with their peers to find out, you know, if anyone is going to a sim similar geographic location, um, any friends or families using social media, as well as connecting with their employer um, and letting them know that, you know, the acceptance of that position might be contingent on them securing housing. Um, along with that, we've provided some renti renting safety guidelines for students to consider, um, some other additional funding considerations, um, and, and again, a, that online um, housing resources. But a lot of this comes with the planning, and so if uh, we you know, want to work with students to create an effective plan for them to strategize for their field work term. So if they are looking to go to, you know, a city that where the cost of rent is high, that they take some time um, and really plan for that experience. Thank you, Sarah. And one interesting follow up to that is um, I had the, the the privilege to work with our Lucia Lortel Theater Foundation fellows this past winter Billboard term, and um, I was in a like a group me type text where all of them were sharing um, insights about their early planning for their winter Billboard term, which all of them uh, were were hosted in New York City, and the the students were were sharing um, resources and information about where they were staying specifically. Um, many of them actually found it more affordable to go through Airbnb or other rental sites for short-term housing, and also were able to share uh, costs of housing in some instances with some of their fellow uh, peers. So the strategies that Sarah just outlined are really important because students are very resourceful and, and they know how to leverage their connections, which has been uh, a great um, uh, opportunity to see them be creative as they navigate um, housing and, and other considerations um, during the fieldwork term period. But again, early planning um, is, is really important, as many of our students have found um, in securing housing or knowing at least what um, um, the uh, where they will be. Wonderful. So, so Sarah, for students who may be planning um, to study abroad or away, um, or who may be on a leave of absence, planning for a leave of absence. How does that, that how does field work term factor into students who may be away for uh, a full academic term or a full academic year? What does that look like? Yeah, so study abroad and study away is a really great opportunity for students and our office works closely um, with academic services when students are interested in, in pursuing that as an option. Um, and even for students that are on a leave of absence, right, if they need to take that time to step away from the college. Um, so in response to that, students, after they've completed the experience, um, will, would be eligible to apply for a field work term waiver, um, understanding that during that time, they wouldn't have been able to search for an opportunity. Um, so that is something that they can use and it will be counted as one of their field work term requirements. Yeah, that's good to know, especially as students may, um, um, as they are front loaded that information when they're beginning to plan um, for uh, study abroad or study away experience or academic services team is, is very upfront and telling them um, uh, or sharing uh, the, the responses to some of the questions that we suspect them to have at some point. And we're here once they return to assist them in navigating the waiver process or getting um, caught up because maybe some students wouldn't want to um, use that waiver as they want to continue um, having those great immersive experiences and need field work term as that vehicle for, for those opportunities. So wonderful. And, and what about... Um, um, you said earlier, Sarah, that one fieldwork term experience or one fieldwork term per academic year of study is, is a, a graduation requirement. What if a student wants to? What if they've already completed a winter fieldwork term and now they really have this amazing opportunity that they want to um, uh, consider as another fieldwork term experience for the summer? And so our, you know, recommendation because it you know we only expect a student to complete one filler term per academic year um, is to really think 
about um, what do they want each of those four experiences to look like, right? As well as balancing their own academic course load. Um, we won't discourage a student from completing more than one in a given academic year, but they are only required to complete four. And so we'd like for potentially the first two to be a little bit more exploratory as many students, you know, have um, plans that are revolve around different areas of interest. And then by the time they're junior or senior, they can have those more competitive um, internship experiences or potentially an independent study with a faculty member um, versus just kind of, you know, checking the box to complete it as a requirement. So our recommendation and when we're working with students in our advising appointments is really to help them um, understand the benefit of you know, taking it one one step at a time um, and making the most of their experiences. Yeah, and that's a good guideline as 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 I uh, reinforce that messaging, I like to think of it as you can um, get caught up, um, but getting ahead might be discouraged because at a later stage of your four or so years at the college, you may miss out on an opportunity um, if, if you cannot count that as a field work term experience as, as the college only requires students to uh, register for those experiences um, for academic credit. So, so great. Well, what about this registration deadline? We talked um, briefly earlier about registering field work term experiences. Um, what if a student misses the post-it registration deadline um, for a uh, an imminent field work term period, Sarah? Well, you know, it happens and life happens, right? So, you know, our job is to support your student. And, uh, you know, the deadlines are communicated to the student from our office on the academic calendar, um, in the weekly coffee hours. Um, so the information is there, but we know sometimes that, you know, with everything that is going on, whether it's the beginning of term or the start coming back from a winter term, we know students can get really busy. Mm -hmm. um, and so if a student is sort of on that cusp of the deadline, um, we will still work with them. We want to ensure that they're, you know, keeping a clear line of communication with us. And that's really the best thing that they can do is let us know where they are in that process, whether they're waiting to hear back from an employer, um, you know, in terms of, you know, just that general, you know, outreach and inquiry, if they've already um, had an interview, right? So they might sort of just be stuck, um, but as long as they're communicating with us and letting us know where they are in that process, we'll continue to work with them. We don't want them to fail. We want them to have this experience. Um, and so we're just there to support them and, and guide them through that process. Wonderful. And yes, the, the summer field work term registration deadline is approaching um, Friday, April 26th is the deadline. And we have several events leading up to um, that deadline to encourage students to receive one-on-one -on -one support with an advisor um, so that they can um, uh, maybe narrow down options if they are receiving multiple offers for a field work term experience, or if they just really need help determining maybe with what experience will um, further elevate their, their specific plan. And what we really um, were excited to introduce to students this, this spring term is a registration prep worksheet, which gives students the opportunity to um, learn more about all the content sections that need to be filled in as part of the registration process so that they can then transfer that information into Handshake. And it's also great for students to have that conversation as they are, but may not be documenting some of that information with their employer or mentor supervisor um, in preparation to register the work term experience. So we're, we're really excited to continue introducing these resources for our students so that they can be better prepared um, as the registration deadline approaches. But yes, as Sarah said, even uh, past the April 26th deadline, we understand that some hiring processes may, may be in flux and students are, are reaching out asking, asking for extensions um, for that deadline. And of course, we're going to work with those students because we want them to be successful and we want to help them navigate it. But as I shared earlier, in that handshake registration process. After we review it, it goes on to the employer to review and approve. And you think it would be a one and done type of um, approval process, but unfortunately some employers um, take longer than um, a month sometimes to um, approve it. And that might be 
um, after numerous outreach efforts through email and phone from the college. So um, that's why we, we have these registration deadlines set um, um, and communicated to students so they can um, they can have their experience fully approved going into the 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 um, the fieldwork term period. All right, and final question. And as I shared with you in our link tree, we have um, we have way too many questions that we thought would be important to share. Um, and, and responses, I think there's like nine or 10 pages of them. So we, we encourage you to reference some additional questions and answers um, in there. And we'll share that in a post event follow up along with the recording of today's broadcast. But finally, Sarah, the 200 hour minimum, what if a student um, somewhere in, in, in their fieldwork term experience as they're calculating their hours and their timesheet um, and they're really excited about what they're what they're doing and they realize, oh my goodness, I am not going to get to 200 hours. What do those students do when they realize that? Yeah, so similarly to the deadline, you know, we we communicate with students all throughout their filler term experience by sending weekly check-in emails and encouraging students to connect with us. Um, you know, part of the expectation between the student and the employer is to, you know, figure out what um, hours are going to be completed. But yes, things happen. Um, there can be a health emergency, family emergency um, between either the student or the employer. And so we understand that those could be factors. Um, and if students are, you know, not close to, you know, acquiring or completing that 200 hour minimum requirement, we'll certainly work with them, whether it means completing and making up those hours um, in the, you know, in the summer or, um, you know, moving forward and thinking about what that could look like for a winter. Um, but as long as, you know, they, again, similar to missing a, a deadline is just being able to communicate with our office and let us know um, what's going on so that we can support them. Wonderful. And, and I encourage, uh, thank you, Sarah, I encourage um, our participants, if you have any questions, to now post them in the chat box, and we're going to begin reviewing them as we go through the last segment of our of our presentation this evening. Um, um, one question before we move on to the tips for success that just came in that is really important is: Can a student repeat an internship um, for a field work term credit, um, especially if they really? enjoyed that experience and they just want to continue um, working either with that employer or or continue that internship over another fieldwork term period. So students are limited to two fieldwork term registrations with the same employer, albeit the experience and the scope of the responsibilities or the priorities that the student is establishing with the with the with the employer, like goals, responsibilities, tasks associated with the experience, are different. Um, because we again want our students to have diversity of skills that they're honing through these experiences, and we do not want them to feel. Um, um, maybe limited in how they can market their experience and skills to prospective employers post Bennington if that experience is if that fieldwork term experience was accumulated um, 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 by one single employer. And I think the advantage and in, in, in the continued leverage that many of our Bennington uh, students leverage, and at least this is what I'm beginning to see come through with our most recent um, uh, survey um, results, which is still not public yet because we're still collecting data from the class of 2023, is that they felt competitive because they had so many experiences from many different employers um, to lean on as um, and to provide examples um, when, um, when interviewing um, for postgraduate employment or when they were um, preparing for academic interviews for graduate school, they felt prepared because of the, the rigorous process that they go through with the plan. So a lot of our experiences are really reliant on students um, um, prioritizing the goals that they're establishing for that opportunity. And sometimes, yes, it comes with the same employer, but the, 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 the scope of the experience needs to, needs to be different, I'm afraid. Wonderful question. All right, my, my final tips for success, and if you have any additional questions, I encourage you to post them in the chat box and Sarah and I will um, review those and begin um, uh, responding to those after I share out um, um, these 
three final tips for, for success and how you can support um, us and our efforts to help our students succeed in their fieldwork term search planning um, and also postgraduate job search planning. Um, we want our students to continue using our one-on-one our -on -one services and our resources. The most productive conversations um, and the confidence that comes from our students after an advising appointment is, is likely going to get them on the right path to success. And that might be identifying a fieldwork term experience that really complements their, their interests, their values, their personality and strengths, elevates their capacities and skills and really helps them build um, um, more of a, a clear runway toward completing their degree at Bennington College. And we're really excited that we can continue um, um, expanding our uh, directory of self-directed resources for students. And our, our, our students are, are, are certainly using these resources and referencing them when they're creating resumes, cover letters, and other, and other um, uh, application materials. So we, we, we certainly recommend reinforcing the students that these resources uh, curated by the college do exist. And we are certainly here to work with them one-on-one -on -one, um, to provide them individualized um, career development support so that they can be successful. Number two, early planning. Too often um, we may um, have students uh, connecting with the office right at the registration deadline wanting to begin the process. And they may just be too early for the next fieldwork term uh, period, um, um, which, is, which is still encouraged because it is early planning nonetheless. But we really want our students to begin building an action plan and thinking about what they want to do um, as, as early as the start of the, the fall term or earlier over the summer period. And as Sarah and I shared throughout the conversation this evening, we encourage students to connect with us throughout the entire calendar year. Year. We are here to brainstorm ideas to help students prepare for their next fieldwork term experience that might be just updating their resume and saying, hey, this is an experience that I'm looking for. Can you help, you know, determine or help me uh, navigate what that's going to look like or when I should begin applying or um, the connections that you may want to um, lead me in the direction to, to begin building um, um, or communicating with. Um, those conversations that start early are going to have um, better results for the student if they're proactive. So we certainly encourage you to reinforce that messaging that early planning is, is certainly important and appreciate it. And then networking, supporting students to grow their, their contact network through um, like-minded professionals who share the same interests and meaning that they find in uh, the world of work. And that might be leveraging some of the resources that we are connecting them to internally, like Handshake, which has a massive um, directory of connections from students across the United States um, and alumni. So we, we, we certainly want our students to build those connections and be proactive in their networking so that they can um, um, share what their interests are and maybe be directed to specific experiences that will align with their expectations for fieldwork term and beyond. Um, and many of the opportunities, I'd argue um, approximately three-fourths of the experiences that are registered um, for a fieldwork term come from some sort of networking. Um, that might be a student consulting with an advisor who has a lead that was shared via email, and they're telling them more about this because what questions our advisors are asking students are prompting um, all of the, the, the information that we have about um, shared opportunities. Or it might be the student um, networking with their peers or even your professional um, connections might be great leads for Gilbert term and beyond. So we encourage students to actively have conversations about what their interests are so that um, those opportunities may surface organically um, or by happenstance through those, through those conversations. So please support us in, in encouraging your student to have those conversations with, with like-minded professionals. We, we do want you to stay in, in, connect, uh, in contact and to connect with us. Um, um, we, we, we really do um, um, 
uh, get excited when students find that opportunity that aligns with um, their expectations for a complementary experience or an extension of their fall or spring term into the fieldwork term period. So we're, we're really excited to, to um, um, kind of meet that mission of Bennington College and the mission of the fieldwork term office. We encourage you to review our link tree, which is which we shared at the beginning of, of the conversation. And I'll also put that again in, or the slide deck in uh, the chat box so that you can reference all of the, the clickable resources that were shared throughout today's presentation, in addition to our link tree, which I'm also including in the chat box for you to maybe bookmark and reference again at a later time. Uh, any general questions about fieldwork term or information that maybe we didn't hit on enough or we can direct you to through email, um, uh, reference that email on your screen, fwt at bennington.edu. And if you're an employer or have job leads or, or may be able to direct us to someone um, to discuss partnerships for fieldwork term experiences, um, you can email employer relations at bennington.edu. And again, that's networking here. So um, I'm kind of wearing two hats now, but the more opportunities that we're alerted to um, that may um, serve the interests of our Bennington students. We certainly appreciate that. All right. So um, any questions that you may have, you may. Yeah, John, we've got two. Perfect. Uh, I'm happy to read it. And then if you want to answer, John, we can, we can. Sure. But, okay. So this is from uh, Marion. Uh, my student has an internship for the summer that they interviewed and auditioned for this past winter break, but I have not been clear if they have gotten the fieldwork term approved. How can I help my student? Yeah, so so students who register their experiences, um, the the registration period or the deadline, like I shared for summer, for example, is April 26. So some of our um, uh, fieldwork term staff are going to begin reviewing submitted experiences in the coming weeks um, in preparation for summer fieldwork term. So what are they doing now? And that, that's, a, that's a fair question. What are they doing now? They're not approving these. Well, as Sarah shared, we have 400, we have 465 um, registrations and completed experiences. And some students still haven't yet wrapped up um, their uh, uh, post experience reflections. Um, we're still um, connecting with employers to um, uh, receive their post experience evaluation. So the assessment part of reviewing those submitted experiences from the previous fieldwork term takes quite a while, um, but we expect that to be wrapped up by the end of this week, actually. Um, but the registration and the approval process will begin um, in, in the coming weeks. And students can always uh, circle back to the office and we'll show them how they can check the status of their submitted experiences because it'll tell them the workflow. Um, um, for instance, once it's approved by us, it'll say moved on into the workflow for a employer slash supervisor approval. And sometimes it times out because the employer doesn't um, uh, does not review or approve it um, within 10 business days. And then it comes back to us in the process for approving um, that experience starts all over. But I encourage you to tell your student to email us and we can sh share with them the direct steps for checking the status of their uh, fieldwork term registration. Thank you for that question. Okay, the next question is from Katie. Uh, does the career development team also help students find summer paid employment beyond fieldwork term opportunities? Say that one more time. Does the career development team also help students find summer paid employment beyond fieldwork term opportunities? Of course. So not every student is uh, going to be looking for um, uh, just fieldwork term or postgraduate. They may be looking for a, a summer gig um, that is compensated, whether that's local in Bennington or if it's beyond. So um, as, as long as the student is, is, is making that clear in their advising appointments so that our advisors are connecting them to um, identify the right fit for what they're, you know, over the summer or winter, whenever they're looking for an experience, um, they can assist them with identifying those, those paid opportunities. Absolutely. And this is an ideal time as many employers are beginning to flood handshake right now to, um, to um, 
uh, promote summer or seasonal employment opportunities. And many of them are really exciting um, um, opportunities that students, um, um, that can be very competitive for different students. Um, all right, uh, there's a question from Jewel. The link for this form is not correctly opening the form. I think that's the, can't quite tell what form that is. Um, might be the taught field work term registration. Yeah, so that form has also been shared with with, with the students. So um, it may have required a, a uh, Bennington email address, I'm sorry, um, but we can certainly share that for you to forward to your student if they're interested in exploring the, the top filler term experience as, as an option. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next question is from Michael. Um, my kid is a freshman. They started early reaching out to about 50 different employers and essentially received zero responses. Um, they've met with you guys a couple of times, got some advice, but nothing came of it. Consequently, this summer, they will do the taught fieldwork term. But what do they do for future fieldwork terms? They did their due diligence and came up with nothing. I would like to add, this has put incredible stress on my kids, straining their performance in their classes. Yeah, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry that um, the, the, the proactive approach there um, um, hasn't yet um, um, the, the results of, of that um, has not yet given um, your, your student the results that they're, that they're hoping for. Um, the top field work term experience though as a first field work term, I, I would say is going to build really great foundational skills that were probably reinforced in one-on-one -on -one advising. And let's, let's, let's be frank here too. The, the first field work term experience is, is and, and sometimes the second field work term experience could be very um, uh, challenging as first and second year students uh, may not be the ideal candidate for competitive internships that may be targeted to more you know, junior and senior level students. So I uh, applaud the the proactive efforts there of, of, of our students who are who are um, applying and, and engaging um, some additional strategies like following up with employers um, um, and continuing to connect with advisors. Um, I assure you, our both of our career uh, advisors are actually career counselors, um, clinically trained from the University of Missouri, and they're very very effective in giving students the the tools that they need to be successful, but sometimes that requires multiple touch points with advisors and we're here to support them in navigating that. With that, there's also this, this stigma or, or, or word that I don't typically like to use in, in, um, um, in these types of forums, but there's this idea of placement in, in higher education that colleges place students into positions. It's not legal, it's not ethical, we can't do that. Um, um, because there's equity issues there. So we do our, our, our best to ensure students have options, which there's thousands of uh, registered experiences um, for students to consider. It's just very competitive. As you know, the world of work right now is increasingly um, competitive for, for talent. So we encourage that top field work term experience is a really good option and we'll continue to working with your student and other students beyond um, um, to ensure that they're successful. But I'm sorry that that's been the case um, um, for, for your student. And uh, John, a follow-up to that is from um, Marion, also stating that this process has been very stressful for their student um, and that they're concerned that the internship they may have not qualify. Um, their student has gotten the, the message repeatedly that they do not have an experience, we're not old enough, et cetera. Yeah, and 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 I, I I certainly hear you, and that's again why this taught field work term experience was piloted by the college um, this year as as a proactive way to ensure that students may not be meeting those obstacles so early on because experiences may be more geared to uh, junior and senior talent, and, and we certainly are listening. And that's why we've introduced these new fieldwork term options. Um, so, so certainly we we want your student to to um, continue um, exploring um, options um, with with our assistance, but we do encourage that top fieldwork term experience is foundational, so that they um, at least can have their first or second fieldwork term experience. Um, 
um, um, through this structured um, uh, format facilitated by myself and another colleague, um, which the feedback we've received from our first, first cohort of 65 first year students has been um, uh, uplifting that we've gotten them in the right direction. Um, and this kind of leads into the next question that came through um, regarding what if the student is, isn't proactive? We, we're layering in um, touch points, not just through career advising, but through our academic advisors and the faculty advisor. So the student is receiving communication um, about the support that we're offering. Um, and we, we don't just encourage students to get on somebody's calendar um, for advising. We offer um, weekly drop-in hours for them to um, come in and have conversations. Um, but um, beyond that, we, we do, you know, st this students are, uh, you know, they are not kids, they are adults, and we, we, we certainly give them that autonomy to um, navigate um, or, or, or seek guidance, but the amount of communication um, that we are sending to our house chairs that are connecting information to, to students um, is, is pretty high. So, um, so we, we imagine that students are, are, are aware um, whether or not they're motivated, um, you know, we, we have to do, um, the college is, is, is certainly going to be addressing um, other issues if someone's just not engaged and not understanding what that process looks like. So there's, there's always going to be work to do to ensure that we're increasing um, awareness of those deadlines and how to facilitate or, or be early in their planning um, for a field work term. And John, there was another um, follow up, this one from uh, Kathleen, um, echoing their concern that their student knows exactly what they would want to do this summer, but is struggling to find an internship pr that provides that. Can you expand on the self-directed option? Yes. So the, the self-directed option, do you mean the independent study, Kathleen, or do you mean the top field or term experience? Uh, the, the independent study. So the independent study is fifth term and above with a full-time faculty member. So if your student is a first year, that um, um, that might be, um, uh, or a second year, that might not be possible. Um, but again, we, second year, yeah. So we'd encourage them to, to, to um, connect with our office so that we can assist in identifying um, viable options that align with their interests. And even, um, and, and what I want to also, like, here's another tip, and, and this may seem very silly, but it's not because the creativity that comes through our students um, never surprises me because they're remarkable. A lot of our students advocate for an experience through networking. For example, a number of our experiences have been the result of a student reaching out to someone and saying, this is Fieldwork Term at Bennington College, here's some information about it. And here's the type of experience that I'm looking for. You may not have that posted, um, but I'm wondering if you would be interested in having a conversation about me, myself, working with you, or you supervising an experience um, over this seven week period. And, and typically the results of that are, are, are pretty, are pretty, um, um, uh, positive for our students who, who are, are beginning to hone those networking skills. That could be very scary for some students, and I understand that. Personally, for me, networking sometimes feels icky, like I'm asking people for things, but I'm really not. Um, but I understand that that's also a developmental skill. So we're here to assist students in navigating those networking conversations. But as I shared earlier, a good deal of our experiences that are registered are a result of networking. And that might be connections that you're aware of or that you're stewarding to your student as well. Yeah, and John, if I could add to that as well, um, if it's a second term student that's about to go into their third year at the end of that fourth term, they can still technically be eligible as they would be going into their fifth term. So if there is a specific uh, faculty member that they'd like to work with, they could start having that conversation with them now. 
Um, and again, you know, apprenticeship is another option, right? So an apprenticeship does not have to be with a full-time faculty member. It can be with someone that's fully established within their field. So I like to tell students that, um, you know, if they're studying ceramics, they should really look for um, someone that they might be interested in apprenticing with to learn specific techniques or styles. Um, and that is an option for them as well. Yeah, and I, I also want to reinforce um, um, if you in, in the chat box, click on our link tree, there's a resource that Sarah and I discussed earlier, the Fieldwork Term Archives. Many of our students, even though we've shared some of these resources and they can sometimes be hidden in, in, in text, we get it in email communication and in other ways that information is dispersed to students. But the Fieldwork Term Archives is organized, I think, don't quote me on this, Sarah, uh, 18 to 22 different career clusters. And in each of those career clusters that students have access to with their Bennington uh, email, um, they're going to find this massive directory of previously completed experiences, including contact information. Yes, we understand that some people may have left their positions, but I think it's also a good source of, of understanding that there's diversity in offerings and students may already have, or the employer may be familiar with the quality of the work that has been completed by former Bennington students. Um, I'd also like to say of our 465 fieldwork term uh, registrations that came through winter and the bulk of them um, of experiences as Sarah shared were from, for internships. Um, every single student that completed an internship in the employer evaluation, the employer indicated yes, they would um, hire a student from Bennington College again. And again, those opportunities are recycled back into our summer fieldwork term um, listings that the employer indicated, yes, that they want to continue um, engaging with Bennington College students. So um, we, we're really excited that our employers recognize the value that they're getting when students are um, interning uh, at Bennington. So Janine just um, asked a question. We understand that our kiddo may not get the perfect internship for their interest as a first year, but are there some sort of bucket experiences um, that there are plenty of so uh, spots for that, you know, maybe get overlooked? That would be a good last minute option. Um, yeah. yeah, that's a good question. So so in my, in my last position, at least, and even for the first part of this academic year, um, I, I've served in an employer relations role and many employers or recruiters that are offering structured experiences that may have dozens of seats to fill begin that recruiting in the fall. And they hope to wrap that recruiting up, and this is for summer experiences, they hope to wrap that recruiting up by the end of the fall term or when the students leave for an extended break over the winter. Um, so that way they can uh, corral all the people that are necessary to determine, do we have all of our spots filled? And if not, we need to go to market because we need to find um, um, that talent. We have a number of positions in Handshake right now that are posting that have multiple openings. And the students who are proactively using Handshake, knowing that it is geared toward early in career or no years of experience talent are, are, are sometimes discovering that this, this specific employer is, is hiring for multiple uh, experiences. The other trick that I recommend, especially for first year students, we've approved recently a number of programs um, and events through Handshake from employer partners to promote seasonal internships. And again, this is based on the students going through Handshake and saying, oh, I'm interested in learning more about um, Bennington Museum and the experiences that they have posted here for this summer. Or I'm very interested in learning about this camp um, in New Hampshire because they're looking for an interactive digital media specialist and they're hiring three people that can work remote or hybrid or exclusively on site. So it's, it's students who, again, are introduced to these resources and they're finding their rhythm. And as they progress toward completing their degree, they're picking up more and more tricks and tips from um, navigating that process every year. The other thing that I that I wanted to say too um, about that is students who may be working on campus, who may find a seasonal position over summer, um, may be able to obtain 200 hours or at least get 100 
hours and 100 hours in another site or 140 hours. So the, the, the diversity of those options might assist students in, in getting an experience that would qualify as one of their fieldwork term registration. So again, uh, uh, working with, with advisors has typically been a good avenue for students to consider, but you hit something on the head that was really important earlier that um, someone might not get the, the internship of their dreams as a first year student. And that's completely okay, but I'm glad that they have interests and dreams to find um, um, because sometimes when you're in that exploration stage, you might really have difficulty finding focus and direction. Um, so I think shooting for a really high standard of what you want or being very open to many different things. And that might be, I want to focus on developing a couple technical skills through this experience. Um, it may not be the ideal environment um, or, or, or what I anticipate, but I'll be able to really focus on the development and get mentorship to hone these specific technical skills. And a lot of students gear their field work term uh, experiences around the development of something specific. Um, so, so that's another important consideration here. But again, what I want you all to, to kind of leave with this conversation today is that we are here to work with the student one-on-one. -on -one. We're not just throwing them to the wolves to figure it out. And as Sarah mentioned earlier, we, we, we certainly um, want students to follow the posted registration deadlines. Um, however, we are very flexible in knowing that some students may not be able to find an experience by those deadlines. So we are here to work with them one-on-one, -on -one, help them build follow-up plans and manage their fieldwork term search process so that they can be successful. Yeah, and I can add just from a couple of little chats going on, um, so yeah, we definitely have a couple of um, employer partners. The Dream Program was one of there's there's many that students can look and find on Handshake. Um, they can even filter it and see where there are like connections, Bennington affiliated connections. Um, summer camps are a great opportunity. It's a really good stepping stone for a lot of students. There's because they'll acquire leadership skills, right? Um, and a lot of those opportunities often tend to be paid and have housing and, and meals accommodated. So we'll often see a lot of students, um, you know, taking on those kinds of experiences. And then another question about um, summer placement within their hometown. Yes, right. Um, because if students can have, you know, a, a roof over their head and are familiar with the area that they're within, we definitely want them to explore um, a place where they are familiar with, right? And so that can be connecting with their local high school or their the local theater within, you know, depending on their area of interest, because that is them sort of beginning to build their own network um, that is close to home. So we, yes, all of those options we we certainly encourage. And again, just to showcase the diversity of uh, employer partners, as, as uh, Catherine mentioned in the chat box about some uh, opportunities from, from NASA, we currently have seven posted internships from NASA in our, in our Handshake database Tar uh, targeting Bennington students. NASA said, Bennington, will you post these? And yes, they've posted them at other institutions, but I'll tell you what, there are seven posted internships, and this is across all handshake institutions. The number of applicants for those seven uh, experiences is one, Bennington student. It won't tell me how many are, are applying from other institutions, but it tells me how many are, have applied from my um, from, from our database at Bennington College. And these are experiences from Houston, Texas to Merritt Island, Florida, all the way to Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio, and, co and cover a, a range of different types of, of internships. So, so certainly the partnerships are, are vast. I think the last time we checked, we had over 60,000 um, registered active employers in Handshake that uh, requested to promote experiences to Bennington. And we don't approve every single employer that posts to Bennington just to, you know, obviously avoid some um, um, employers that shouldn't be in the system um, gaining access to connect opportunities to students. So, so we're, we're very, we, we comb through these daily when they come through. Any last minute um, questions? You know, we're over time, but this has been such a 
a productive conversation. Um, and and we, we certainly welcome you to ask any follow-up questions to fwt at bennington.edu. Again, I'll put that um, in the chat box so that you can reference that and ask us any questions. Um, we will follow up um, um, sometime in the next 48 hours with a, um, a recording of today's broadcast and also some of the resources that we referenced. Um, in addition, maybe just some directions on how you can share, reinforce communicating with your student, how to connect with our advisors um, to schedule their own advising appointments. Um, Sarah and I work weekly with our communications uh, department and uh, providing communication through the, the um, institutional newsletters. So there, there's certainly a lot of reinforcement in communication out there. So, so we, we certainly hope that you'll continue um, being our partner in student success um, and getting your student connected to the right resources, services, and information about field work term at Bennington. Wonderful. Well, again, thank you, and and as always, because I I you know I'm I'm certainly a um, a, a fan of of ensuring everyone can stay connected. I just put my LinkedIn link in there. If you would like to connect with me, I'd be welcome to accepting that connection and staying uh, connected and sharing information through my my public uh, LinkedIn profile as well. So again, everyone have a wonderful um, um, rest of your week. And we, we certainly look forward to celebrating the success of your student because we could not do it without you um, um, as you are our partner in student support and success. So thank you again, and everyone have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your evening.